Well, thank you, everybody. I know it's a, uh, a busy day for a lot of people, and we appreciate you taking the time to uh, join us today. Uh, obviously, none of you can go out in public without talking with somebody about the issue uh, involving the price of, of gas. Uh, motor fuel prices continue to rise. Uh, yesterday, when I filled up here in Springfield, it was a little over $4.60 a gallon. So uh, prices are now at a point where they're devastating uh, families. Uh, they're devastating those who are trying to get to work. Uh, and these costs have increased and also hurting businesses that rely on a lot of transportation. So uh, while these families, and most of the blame for the cost of this, uh, is really coming from Washington, where we have little influence on, there are some things that we can do uh, as a state. And those are what, that's what we're here today to talk about. Uh, Illinois is just one of seven states uh, that has, in addition to the motor fuel tax, has a sales tax. And we have both a state sales tax and a local sales tax that is on the price of motor fuel. Motor fuel tax is, as you know, a flat tax. It's not impacted by the change of fuel. And those dollars, by law, go into the road fund, which is a lockbox uh, program. Whereas sales taxes increases as the price of fuel goes up. Those dollars mostly go back into government coffers. And that's what we're calling on a change today. We believe that during a crisis, Government should not be allowed to benefit at the expense of taxpayers. Here's what we're proposing. It's fair. It doesn't impact our obligation to the state uh, road program uh, and should not affect budgets. But it will save taxpayers hundreds of millions of dollars a year uh, with this change. Here's the proposal. Very simple to understand. Very simple to implement. We just simply cap the state's sales tax at 18 cents a gallon, the price that we were paying approximately a year ago before prices started to go up. This would provide relief at the pump immediately uh, for consumers. And if prices continue to rise, if prices hit $5.50 a gallon, for example, the savings to this simple change to consumers would be nearly $1 billion. That equates to about 16 cents a gallon or about $3 every time an individual or a family fills up their car. If we do nothing, consumers are going to be devastated by this increasing tax. These increased revenues just become a windfall for politicians and government, and we don't believe that that's fair. So with that in mind, again, this is an opportunity for us to do something to help taxpayers uh, in, in Illinois and without having it negatively affecting uh, the budgets or the state. So with that, I'd like to turn it over to uh, my colleague, uh, Senator, to, uh, Senator DeWitt, to uh, add a few points. Thank you, Senator. Good afternoon, everyone. Thanks for coming out. Uh, State Senator Don DeWitt, 33rd District, representing Kane and McHenry Counties. As my colleague Senator Severson said, gas prices are increasing very quickly to the point where it's only a matter of time until we will be seeing $5 per gallon gasoline or more across the state of Illinois. Luckily, as state legislators, we have the ability to take swift action to provide real substantive relief for motorists across this state. Illinoisans are already reeling from 40 year high, from a 40, high, 40 year high rate of inflation. While we cannot control many aspects of the price of gasoline, we do have the authority to enact policies that bring that cost down considerably. Illinoisans need this type of relief and they need it right now. That's why we're asking our colleagues across the aisle and Governor J.B. Pritzker to fast track this important legislation that affects every 
purchaser of gasoline in the state of Illinois, whether they are Republican, Democrat, Independent, there are no partisan politics when it comes to the price of gas. Like I said, it's not a partisan issue. I'm sure our colleagues across the aisle and their constituents are just as unhappy about gas prices and how fast they are rising. We can and we must work together to provide this relief to our residents. It's important to note that our legislation would not have a negative effect on the state budget since the budget revenue is based on a cost of gas at 287 per gallon. That's the rate that was established by the Department of Revenue a year ago. Of equal importance, our measure ensures road improvement funds remain steady. These climbing gas prices are bad for motorists and consumers, and they are bad for businesses that are paying higher costs to bring their products to market. We have the ability to provide real relief, and we are asking for prompt consideration, prompt passage, and the signing of this legislation. With that, I'm happy to turn the microphone over to Mr. Josh Sharp, CEO of the Illinois Fuel Retailers Association. Thank you. Thank you. Good afternoon. Thank you all uh, for being here today. Uh, my name is Josh Sharp. I'm the CEO of the Illinois Fuel and Retail Asso Association. And on behalf of our organization, I want to thank Senator Severson and DeWitt uh, for bringing this issue to the forefront. As we stand here today talking about gas prices, uh, Illinois now has the second highest gas taxes anywhere in the country. Only California is now more expensive. On average, 78 cents in taxes are added to every gallon of gas that's purchased in Illinois. And in Chicago and Cook County, it's even worse, where more than a dollar in taxes is tacked on to each gallon. Illinois' neighboring states, however, fare much better. Indiana stands at a, a collective tax rate of about 68 cents per gallon. Wisconsin's at 51 cents per gallon. Iowa and Kentucky are both at around 48 cents per gallon. And Missouri is, there, is right there with 35 cents per gallon. Think about it this way. Every time an Illinoisan living near the Missouri border thinks about filling up, they know they will pay twice as much in gas taxes if they cross the Mississippi. You can guess the decision that they make every single day. But we're here today to talk about sales taxes, where Illinois also remains an outlier. As Senator DeWitt mentioned, we're only one of a handful of states that permit sales taxes on top of our already lofty motor fuel tax. The legislation put forth today would provide real, meaningful tax relief for Illinois citizens at a time when they need it most, and Illinois state government needs it least. Illinois revenues are already $4.6 billion higher for the current fiscal year than originally projected while at the same time, millions across the state are struggling with sky-high gas prices caused by record inflation and geopolitical tensions that are simply out of their control. Capping Illinois' gas tax at its current rate of 18 cents per gallon will help lower the cost of gasoline across Illinois and put a stop to a tremendous sales tax hike for motor fuel scheduled later this year. This legislation represents a common-sense approach to saving motorist money, making Illinois fuel retailers more competitive with our surrounding states, while at the same time keeping in place adequate funding for infrastructure improvements across Illinois. Uh, I'd be happy to take any questions later, but for now I'm gonna turn it back over to Senator Severson. Thank you very much. So again, as we can see, this is a, a simple uh, measure that can be implemented immediately. It's something that legislators on both sides and the governor have talked about the need to do. This is just a simple way to do it that can be implemented literally within weeks uh, and put into place. And so uh, uh, with that, we'd be happy to answer any questions that you have. So this, this only impacts the sales tax, not the motor fuel tax. That's right? correct. This so is just the sales tax, not the motor fuel tax. That's why it's important to understand that we have two taxes, which most consumers don't always understand. The flat road tax stays the same. We don't impact that. That's what's going to rebuild our roads, both locally uh, and statewide. This is the sales tax that's on top of that. So that sales tax, where does that ultimately go? Does that go back to local governments? Or sure. is that, that goes back to the state. So at most that goes to the state. Uh, now, having said that, local governments are also reaping a benefit from this increased sales taxes. For those local governments that have a sales tax on top of, of that, and we're certainly urging those local governments 
to take that windfall of revenue that they're getting, give that back in relief, whether it's property tax relief, uh, but they need to give relief to people back home as well because those aren't dollars local government had planned on. It's windfalls coming into them. Give it back to struggling taxpayers back home as well. We're just dealing with the state's portion of the sales tax. Isn't the sales tax at the pump part of just the blanket 6.25% sales tax? Would this only apply to the pump or would this affect the sales tax in, in general? Because isn't it? This is the 625 that would be capped at 18 cents. For just gas? For just gas. Okay, it wouldn't affect anything else. Because I thought that was just like a blanket sales tax yeah. across all sales. You can segment it like that. You can so we can it. cap it. Under this legislation, we would cap it. You would still pay the 6.25, but only until you hit 18 cents a gallon. Yeah. And then that would, that would stop. So it could go lower than 16. It definitely could it go could lower. Go if lower if prices it. ever drop, the good news is yeah. then it would drop. This is the ceiling that would yeah. be set at 18 cents. So is there any indication from the other side of the aisle if they'll call this? Um, we just finished working on this uh, today, mm -hmm. uh, and we're going to be meeting with them. Uh, the good news is it has you know support from uh, business groups. Uh, it has support from uh, consumer groups, obviously from the people who are uh, dealing with, uh, with fuel. Uh, and again, the, the governor had talked about some uh, uh, relief. Mm -hmm. uh, his proposal was one that would take the money away from the road program mm -hmm. as opposed to the sales program. And I think most legislators on both sides of the aisle, uh, including labor, uh, do not like the idea of taking money away from the road fund because that's creating jobs, that's fixing our roads. Mm -hmm portion of that's going back to local roads. So we're dealing with just the sales tax portion so it's not impacting the rebuilding of our state's infrastructure. So the governor's proposed pausing the uh, scheduled increase in the motor fuel tax. Are you offering this as an alternative to that? Yes. In addition to that? This would be an, al uh, an alternative to that. Because again, the concern is he is talking about uh, uh, delaying the road construction tax, which again, there was an agreement in place uh, that was passed as part of the capital plan. Uh, and those are dollars that are rebuilding the state's infrastructure. Uh, and a portion of that's going to local governments for their roads. And the problem is, if you, relieve, if you reduce that, more pressure will be put on local governments, which means property taxes will end up going up to pay for, uh, for their infrastructure road repairs. So we're talking about the sales tax, which again, no commitment was made to those dollars. This isn't money they planned on, so it's the easiest and least controversial portion of it because the only, there are no losers, the winners are the consumers uh, in, in Illinois. So is this for the people neutral? Is it, um, is it permanent or temporary? Can you address both of those? You want to talk um, Sure. I guess the short answer is it would be revenue neutral. I mean, even when the governor proposed his new budget for 2023 in February, he had no clue that gas would be escalating so dramatically like it is today. His budget forecasts, in, in my estimation, were based on that current $2.87 price that the 18 cents a gallon is currently based on. He's projected that revenue into 2023. So again, I, we believe it's revenue neutral from the uh, governor's budget proposal standpoint in 2023. Permanent or temporary? It would be permanent. Can I say one thing just to your question? The, the okay. sales tax okay. is my... Sorry, this is just a technical point. As the price of the commodity goes up, because sales tax is a percentage, the amount you pay goes up. Right. So this is purely a windfall to the state of Illinois, okay? No one anticipated, no one expected this money. Right. We are, gou the state is gouging people at the pump on this. We need to give them their money back. So but in a certain amount of time, and usually it lags a little bit, the cost of inflation is also going to hit state government. And we were four, the the over four billion in new revenues in the governor's budget. Yeah, so as I just mentioned, we've yeah, we've already we're over four billion dollars over current uh, projection, and we have to remember, even if government talks about struggling, families are struggling more. Yes, uh, they're being hit with inflation more. Uh, not only with fuel costs, but food costs uh, are going up so dramatically. Why can't we do something to help the taxpayers uh, as opposed to giving government this huge windfall of revenue that they weren't planning on 
that I'm sure they could always come up with ways to spend it. But, but money is always better left in the pockets of taxpayers who know how to spend their money better than government does. Looking at the two plans, can you explain for the people at home, you know, you're saying how much they could save from your plan. Can you compare it to how much they would save from the governor's plan that was included in the budget? Because it may be minimal or it may be more on your end. Yeah. Oh, way more. I think yeah. the governor's uh, proposal was uh, uh, translated to a couple cents a gallon. Uh, with this, we're talking about 13 to 15 cents uh, or more. It's a dramatic difference. But again, the other difference is the money that he was talking about is coming directly out of roads, which again potentially could cost jobs and delay uh, crucial road work that needs to be done. Ours is money that was never obligated, uh, and so a big difference, but clearly a, a savings uh, for uh, a, a much bigger savings for consumers in Illinois. I think, I think, your bill I think, I think the governor. I think the governor's proposal was like 134 or 140 right. million or something like that versus a billion. Close, to, close to a billion, or depending on yeah, depending on what the price of if price goes to 550 uh, a gallon or more, the savings is approaching a billion dollars that will be left in the pockets of consumers as opposed to a windfall of money going into politicians' pockets to use for whatever they want to spend on, so. His was temporary, this is permanent. That's another huge difference. Yep. If your proposal can't move as it stands right now, are you willing to have that as part of budget negotiations to try and include that as you guys come to the table? Uh, certainly you're, you're the, you're the, you're the, you're the, Don, you're the budget guy. Well, I, I um, yeah, well, um, this is something that can be enacted immediately. Um, the budget process is still weeks away. Um, some people are suggesting we will see $5 gas in this state within a matter of weeks. The impact on increased taxes to the consumer will be immediate and it will be dramatic. Um, July 1st, the rate gets readjusted based on the new average cost of gasoline. And if you look at where gas was January 1st compared to where it will be July 1st, that increase in sales tax alone will be dramatic. This is legislation we are asking our colleagues across the aisle and Governor Pritzker to enact immediately. Um, the bill was filed, Senate Bill number 4195 um, will be read into the record as soon as possible. The language is prepared. Uh, we could act on this bill as soon as we get back the week after next. Would any of you like to respond to the governor yesterday in Bloomington saying that uh, you know, gas prices are an issue? He said that the silver lining is it might push people to buy electric vehicles. <laughs> <laughs> Let that, me cake. That, that's exactly what I would have expected him to say in this environment. Um, the cost of electric vehicles are very expensive in this state. Even with the proposed tax credit that he is including in his budget, for people who do purchase electric vehicles. Um, Thirty, forty, fifty thousand dollars for a brand new electric vehicle is a lot of money for a lot of folks. A lot of people in the state are stuck with the cars they have and will be for quite some time. Uh, we think this is the quickest way to get taxpayers dramatic relief at the gas pump virtually within a matter of weeks. Is there another instance of a tax in the state that has a percentage set to it but is also capped? this way that this would be? Or would this be a, a state first? I don't know the answer to that question. We can certainly find that out. But I can tell you this one is affecting taxpayers most dramatically right now. We want to address this issue right now and fix the problem that's currently created to keep this state from enjoying another tax windfall at the expense of our taxpayers. Let me, I, I, I want to, I want to comment sure. quick. So to your question on negotiation, a, a windfall of money that government was never expecting should never be a negotiated topic, okay? This is money that can go directly back to consumers and set into the pockets of government. As to the governor's uh, statement, um, tone deaf is not a strong enough word for that statement. The single parent that has a 10, 20 year old vehicle that's trying to scrape money together to get to work talking about them buying a on on the low end a sixty thousand dollar electric vehicle is ridiculous josh um yeah can you talk about the impacts to your members sure. um when it comes to 
that person driving over to Missouri or Tennessee yeah. or wherever? Um, what does that mean for their employees? Yeah. What does that mean for their bottom line? We don't, we don't have the numbers in yet, but, you know, just anecdotally, I hear from my members, especially in border areas, that, you know, volumes are way down. Um, that's sort of what is so sinister about the sales tax is that Illinois is going to make off with a lot more money than they expected, and we're going to do less volumes. More of that business is going out of state. Uh, it's really only Illinois fuel retailers and motorists that feel the pinch. The state of Illinois is going to walk away with a lot more money than they thought. We'll get those volumes probably in the next month or two from revenue, and I'm, I'm, I'm sure certainly in those areas, especially the border areas, they'll be down. Sorry, okay. I'd like to thank you all very much for coming out this afternoon. Uh, we'll be available for any questions. Thanks.